Hey, our run showcase is up next, and that is Les Landis. He is the president of Landis and Associates, it's a management consulting firm that provides services in organizational planning, team development, organizational communication, employee engagement, and performance improvement systems. He is the former head of corporate communication for one of the world's largest food companies, where he was responsible for corporate advertising, public and media relations, consumer affairs, employee communication, and creative services. He has also played a major role in developing and implementing the company's quality management system. A nationally recognized expert on employee engagement, Landis is the author of the business fable, Getting to the Heart of Employee Engagement, as well as the numerous articles published in a very variety of professional publications. Join me in welcoming Les as he speaks to us about overcoming barriers to continuous improvement. I give you Les Landis. Thank you. Thanks, Jane. You made me sound pretty cool. Um, so I'm going to start with the question. How many people in this room would like to have their businesses be better than they are today? Every single person. If there is absolutely one universal truth about everybody in business, is that they want today to be better than yesterday and tomorrow to be better than today. It's not just business, it's just who we are. That's how we're made up. And so my question is, I guess I should move on here. My question is, if it's something that we all want so much, why do we struggle with having systematic continuous improvement in our businesses all the time? And the reason is pretty simple. It's actually because they're missing the word systematic. Everybody knows it's important. They all want it. In fact, I'll even take it this far. It is absolutely the most vital key to sustainable success and superiority. If you want to be a winner, you've got to be engaged in systematic continuous improvement. How many of you are familiar with Jim Collins, the book, Good to Great? It's probably everybody in this room. Everybody is familiar with this phrase, right? I agree with that. Let me show you one that's more important. Because today's great is tomorrow's standard, I promise you. Great is the enemy of better. I mean, it is the absolute enemy of better, being great. So when do most improvements usually get made? Well, you got good stuff that's going down. Profits, clients, productivity, it's all going down right? Or you've got bad stuff going up, errors, customer complaints, so on and so forth. And here's when it usually happens, when the shit hits the fan. Oh my God, we've got to make an improvement, right? And what are you doing? You're being sporadic and reactive. That's how improvements get made in most organizations. We want to get employees involved in helping us make improvements, right? We keep telling them, we want you to come forward with your ideas and help us get improvements so that we can be better than before. But here's what people are hearing or what they're saying when they're being told that. I'm not going to read all these to you. You can see them yourself. But we tell people we want them to give us improvements, but this is what's going on in their heads, right? because we don't really have any kind of a systematic approach to making things better. If you really want to get employees involved, you got to make it inviting, truly inviting. You got to have a routine and you got to make it easy. These are the things that have to be done in order for people to overcome their resistance to getting engaged in systematic continuous improvement. And the focus on the small stuff is so vitally important. That easy point, <clears throat> because what you do every day, every day systematically has, however small it may be, has far greater long-term impact than what you do once in a while, however big it may be. Drip, 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 drip every day. 
How many of you have ever been to the Missouri Botanical Gardens? In the Japanese garden, there is a little display with a bamboo shoot that's coming out of the rock and the water is dripping, 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 tiny little bit. Down beneath is a hard granite stone. And after years and years and years, the granite stone is concave from drips of water, single little drips of water. Every time, all the time, every minute, every day, every year, every decade, that's how you make a profound difference. And you can literally move boulders with that kind of methodology. And I'm gonna give you an example of this. British cycling team won the Olympic gold medal in 2008. <clears throat> Do you know when the previous time was that anybody from the British cycling team won the gold medal? 100 years before. 100 years. And I think it was in 2005, they decided to uh, find somebody who would help them with that. And he came up with this, and I can't remember his name, um, but the new coach said, we're going to work on something called the aggregation of marginal gains. It's an economics term, which basically says we're going to get one bit better, one bit better, one bit better, one bit better on top of what we did before. And it's kind of the concept of compound interest, which Einstein said is the eighth wonder of the world. <laughs> and here's a, a visual example of it. You know, if you're just doing sort of incremental stuff, simple interest, you know, we'll do something here, something there, so on. Yeah, you're going to make some gains. But if you're actually doing it all the time, 1%, 1% on top of the other one, the impact over time is huge. It's like the, the typical hockey stick, right? Well, let me tell you what happened to give some examples of what they did. Um, again, I'm not gonna read all of this stuff to you, but these are just some of the simple things they did. Look at, look at this second to the last one. They painted the inside of the transport truck so dust particles were more visible because one dust particle in a gear could mean one hundredth of a second in a race. The tiniest little things. Now, by itself, is it gonna make a difference? Hell no. What made the difference? It's all of this stuff and hundreds more every single day. All of the little things that aggregated over time. Take a look at this. After nothing for a hundred years, look at what they did from 2008 to 2020. Look at that. They're still unbeatable today, unbeatable. I'm gonna show you one example that I have in my toolkit. I've got about a dozen of these systematic continuous improvement processes, and this is a huddle and a scoreboard. Your teams meet once a week for 30 to 60 minutes. They update their team metrics, KPIs, look at the stories. What's the story behind these numbers? Numbers by themselves are worthless. It's what's the story behind the numbers. Let's talk about that. Then they review new and ongoing improvements. Give me some improvements. The smaller, the better. Because what? You can get them done. They're easy to get done. Then you assign offline actions. You got to let people work on these improvements. And at the end, you acknowledge and celebrate the accomplishments and contributions systematically, every single week, every single person is part of their job. Why don't people do this normally? Because they've got work to do. Why would I take time making improvements when I got work to do? Because that's what I'm getting measured on, evaluated on. So you gotta make it part of the work routine every single week. Here's some examples of uh, the uh, financial impact. You just get two improvements per employee times 40 people, 80 improvements. Average, this is actually small. You get, uh, what is that? 80 improvements times 2,500. That's $200,000 the first year, right? Time, three improvements per employee times 40 people, 120 improvements times, let's say it's $1,000 per year. You got 120,000. 
total money and time savings, $320,000 first year. That's to the bottom line. If you got 10% margins, that means you got to generate $3,200,000 in order to get that kind of impact. So additional benefits. People believe they are being heard and taken seriously, taps into the natural desire to improve. People feel more engaged, more valued, more loyal, deepens appreciation and belonging, makes people feel part of a building a winning team that keeps the organization ahead of change, fosters a problem solving culture and improves customer relationships. Is that worthwhile? 30 to 60 minutes a week for everybody on the team? The impact is huge, both directly on the bottom line because of that incremental impact and improvement and because of the impact that it has on human beings. In the book, Atomic Habits, which I highly recommend that you read, the first chapter is all you got to read, your life will be changed. James Clear says winners and losers have the same goals. Winners and losers have the same goals. Get that. We all want to win. We all have the same desire and passion to win. What's the difference? Winners are systematic and preactive. I like preactive better than proactive. I could never tell what the hell the difference was between being active and proactive. But preactive, I know, prepare, prevent, preempt. Let's be pre as much as we can. Systematic and preactive systems, processes, rituals, routines, habits, tools for staying on course and for systematic continuous improvement. Even when your processes are great and doing wonderful and you're doing super, you've got to be focused on being better than before. In fact, it's our good habits and processes that we never look at that keep us stuck where we are. This is one of the most profound statements I have heard in many, many years. The book is written by Gretchen Rubin and habit, you can put in process or whatever you wanna put in place of habit, but look at this. Habit is a good servant, but a bad master. Good servant, but a bad master, because it will keep you enslaved in doing what you're doing now, good or bad. You're never gonna get better if you let your habits and your processes be your master. So you gotta create an intentional habit to break the default habit of doing things over and over and over again the same way. The continuous improvement huddle is just one example. So that's it. Thank you very much. Anybody got any questions or comments? Yeah, Richard. I have two. One, uh, I've been working with Vance Morris, who used to be the marketing director for Disney, and he always calls, tells you to keep plussing things, yeah. words, making it better. My one other question is, when you talking about teams and everything, if you're a one-man band, how do you do that? If you were a one-man band? Yes. Oh, pretty simple. You just start making a list. What it, I, mean, I actually tell people when you're getting ready for your huddles, you should have a little what I call your bug book right next to you because every single person in every organization has things that bug the hell out of them, right? So just make a list of what the bug things are. Put one every single day. The smaller, the better. Keep a bug book. Yeah. Yeah, there's uh, a wealth of information here, but one of the memories that it triggered is that I saw Tony La Russa interviewed when he was a manager of the Cardinals. And the question he was asked is, how do you keep your players focused through the long season that baseball is? Yeah. And he said, oh, we don't think about that. Right. We focus on each series. So every series is yeah. three or four games. And our focus is on winning the series. If we win enough series, we're going to be in the playoffs. Right. Yeah. And so, you know, it's a way to keep people focused, but it's also a way to break a big goal down into smaller, more manageable goals. Right. Yep, absolutely. And I would, I would dare say that they don't even talk about winning. They talk about what are we going to do to improve how we hit the ball, how we feel the ball. They don't talk about how are we going how are we going to get better at winning. It's not what you're talking about because winners and losers have the same goals, right? Yeah, uh, it's a great presentation, Les. Thank you. 
I'd like to add a comment about breaking our default habits. Mm. Um, one of the things they say about our, our brains and longevity is that whenever we change our habits, we're creating new brain cells. Absolutely. And so Neural I think pathways. there's an added benefit to what you're talking about. Absolutely. It creates new neural pathways. And you know that probably better than most. Yeah, Karen. Two things. One of them is I want to give kudos for Les volunteered to help Gateway with an onboarding process and working with him was amazing. Things we would have never thought to do. The questions he asked were deep and insightful. The other thing, when you brought up the huddle, I've always loved the idea of a huddle, but as a nonprofit without employees, um, but we finally have what is a real working board, not a board of directors that may not attend our meetings, but real um, feet on the ground members that are at every meeting that's part of our board. Mm. And every Friday we have our huddle yeah. and it has changed. Well, for one thing, it's taken about 500 pounds off my shoulders. <laughs> but the other thing is just how much more we're accomplishing. Yeah. And sometimes if it's a very small thing, one of us may finish it while we're on the call. Yeah. To, so the huddle is great. And I love the bug book idea. Yeah. Or I'm going to make my own. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And I just want to comment on one thing. Lots of people have huddles, but they get into all kinds of different conversations. How's the business going? What are we doing this? What kind of problems are we having? How we Make sure that your huddle for systematic continuous improvement focuses on absolutely nothing. But what improvement ideas do you have? What's the status of the improvement ideas that we're currently working on? If you have to have other things, fine, but make sure you declare a a stopping point for the other conversations so that you focus on nothing but ideas for improvement. Make sense? Great. Thank you all very much. <laughs>